All right, it's finally out. The 26-man squad for the Canadian men's national team is out. Uh, not too many surprises, but some notable absentees. And I'm here with Michael Singh, James Sharman, and Sarah Pararia here for Room 442. Mikey, I'll start with you. I mean, obviously, Daniil Henry uh, pulling out because of an injury is a sad thing, and we wish him all the best. But who's the next man up now behind him? Oh, it has to be Joe Waterman, right? Uh, this is a guy who his ascent from the Canadian Premier League just three years ago to now representing the Canadian men's national team at a World Cup is just such an incredible story in its own right. Like, we can go through each and every one of these players and talk about their individual stories, but there might not be one that stands out more than than Joel Waterman and what it means for Canadian football in this country, right? A couple years ago, Canadian Premier League was looked as as a league that may not even survive. And now you're feeding players to the World Cup. Uh, just just incredible. And his ascent with CF Montreal, is it, it's justified, right? He, he earned his spot on, on Qatar. And he, I don't know if he'll get minutes, but if he does, um, it'll, be, it'll be a special moment for Canada. Yeah, I, I still look, that, though, sorry, Albert, I look at that squad, though, and the defense is, is the glaring weakness. I think it's, mm. it's fair to say. And that's nothing against, you know, Joel Waterman, who is an incredible story and is still learning his trade. I, I really think that next man in, if, if one of Johnston, uh, Miller or Vittoria go down, it's going to be a Tiba, which isn't great either. Um, he, he's played there before and he's, he's not a center half, but he can do a, a serviceable job there. And at 39, I'm not sure I want him back there, but I, I still think he's the guy, if it comes down to that, he'll be the guy that is picked as, as a replacement, um, which just, I think, tells you that that's the area of, of concern uh, in this squad for me. Yeah, and Herdman did hint at that in his post-match uh, or post-squad uh, announcement press conference saying Atiba is in that center-half squad depth. And it's I understand it. We've seen him play in that role. But, Sarah, how concerning is it that you have, you know, I know it's Atiba, as James and Mikey like to say, <laughs> but a 39-year-old who hasn't really played much could potentially be the next man up. Uh, when it comes to center backs yeah no it's a massive concern you know age is one thing playing time is one thing but then when we look at the teams that Canada are going to play these teams are no joke so it's not you know it's not going to be a walk a walk in the park regardless but I am concerned about you know the pace maybe if he's back there as well they're going to go up against you know players like Kevin De Bruyne, Tealsman, Lukaku how how is he gonna you know if he has to play in the back there is he gonna be able to defend players of you know that level it's a hundred percent a concern yeah and one thing with Canada though that could help him out in some of those center backs is they don't really play a high line especially against those teams they're gonna have most of the ball most of the possession so that could help them I should note though that th what a class move by the way from John Herdman saying Daniil Henry will be there in some capacity to to help John Herdman and talk to the players and keep that brotherhood and James we heard that non-stop from throughout the broadcast and from John Herman. This is a brotherhood. It feels like um, camaraderie and how people fit in and personalities played a huge role into his selection here. Yeah, I think because it's a squad announcement day, we can say that is the first official brotherhood comment we've heard in the, the run to the World Cup. We heard it throughout <laughs> qualifying at least seven times a day. Um, so I imagine we're going to hear it a lot. And it is absolutely key, though, all joking aside, this is a very tight group. And when John Herbman got the job, they weren't a tight group. They were cliques. There was infighting. He really changed that around. And, you know, throughout the qualifying campaign, you heard about Daniel Henry and the role he has. And wherever he goes, he's popular. Players, rooms, and coaches like him as a man. And uh, I think he'll be really important. And, yeah, I agree with you, Albert. Real class move to do that. They didn't have to do that. Um, so I, I think he's more important off the pitch at this point than on the pitch, really. And uh, I think it's a great move and he'll have his role. That's for sure. Yeah. Mikey, yeah. Neil Henry, uh, obviously, as I just mentioned, looks like that paved the way for Liam Frazier to come in in the midfield. What should Canada fans expect from him? Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who may just be the best passer on the team, right? He has the ability to ping balls when he has the ball at his feet. And, you know, I said it on our show a couple of days ago that I believe at a world cup, Liam Frazier should actually be starting ahead of a guy like Sam Piet, two guys that can play sort of similar roles. But I think Liam Frazier, when he has possession, has that quality to, to keep the ball. And 
we've seen it in the past when he pinged that ball to Jonathan David over the top. He has the ability to stretch the back line. And if Canada is going to play on the counterattack like we expect them to against sides like Belgium and Croatia, Liam Frazier's ability to, to be in possession there and break down a, a defense with just a single pass is going to be key. So, yeah, I loved his inclusion. I was really happy for him. A guy many thought wasn't going to make it because he wasn't included as part of a lot of Canada squads down the stretch uh, does find a way to get in. So happy for Liam. Yeah. Another player who was uh, brought in David Wertherspoon from St. Johnstone, obviously Canadian fans haven't seen much of him recently. He was out for a while uh, with an ACL tear came back in October. Uh, James, I want to ask you about this. How does he fit into this whole thing? I'm a big fan of Wertherspoon actually. Uh, I think when he's come over Canada, he's looked really good. He's playing at, you know, with, with, all joking aside, Scottish football is a decent level of football. Um, and, and he's a leader. Again, another popular guy, good technical ability, uh, can throw a pass and is, is very disciplined on the pitch. So I, I think he can definitely fit in there. He's not going to start, I wouldn't think. Um, but he's definitely got a role in this World Cup. He's one of those guys I think we'll see minutes at some point. Um, and you know, at some point, maybe maybe this week on the show, we can go through the squad and who, who won't get minutes, barring injuries. Because 26 men. You, you won't, you, there'll be guys who you don't, you, you forget about by the time the World Cup finishes, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think he'll be one of them. I think he'll be a guy you bring on in the second half to solidify the group if, if the game's going well. Absolutely. And Sarah, let's talk about the forwards. Eight forwards uh, named by John Herdman. Uh, no surprises, really. We expect to see Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, uh, Junior Hoylid, Kyle Laren. Uh, but I really wanted to touch on Laren here because I think he's the only real concern when it comes to forwards because he's played such an important part in qualifying for the World Cup. With his lack of playing time and his lack of form, how much more pressure does that put on Jonathan David to, skip, to, to carry the scoring load? Yeah, I think it does. But we've seen, you know, David perform this season in France and he's, you know, fit for sure. I don't think any of the pressure that they're going to put on him isn't something that he hasn't already been taking on for team Canada getting to this stage, as well as, you know, competing in France for Lille in terms of Laren though, I think he is a little bit questionable sometimes, but he still manages to always perform at these big matches. So are we going to see that again? Maybe he's always that guy there for the tap and he can score these goals. So I'm curious to see how that works out because I still think maybe Laren will get away with, you know, being that guy again, if Canada were to score. And I think during the announcement, it was de Guzman who said he's going to score the first goal for Canada. <laughs> yeah. That's wishful thinking. I mean, Mikey, uh, <laughs> how much like, that's a concern too, right? Leaning on a player who's out of form, not really scoring goals, but he, once he puts on that shirt, he can perform. Yeah, uh, the World Cup's a different level, though, right? A lot of the teams that he does end up performing against are not teams that are ever going to make it to a World Cup, right? He takes advantage of a lot of smaller clubs. Mm -hmm. We have seen him step up in big moments, specifically against Mexico at the Azteca. He did it again against the United States. So he is capable of doing that. But after such a long period of time where, where guys are out of form, especially for a striker, at a World Cup, it's a different level. Um, so I wonder if he's a guy that just comes off the bench for Canada, which, you know, that what a great option to have. A guy like Cal Kyle Laren, your all-time leading scorer, coming off the bench to supplement Jonathan David. Uh, it's, you know, in a way, it could be a blessing in disguise because it makes John Herdman's decision a bit easier about who to pick in his starting 11. Yeah, I think it's a really valid some, point. Uh, key minutes in Club Brugge's most recent game. He was an unused substitute. Tejon Buchanan actually came on. James, uh, in terms of the forwards, are you surprised by any of the selection at all? No, I mean, the one you could talk about would be Liam Miller, right? But uh, he, he's played pretty well this year. He's got minutes at least. Um, he, he's your typical winger. He, he's shown off the bench he can do a job. Um, but I, I think, like, like Mikey said there, it's a real valid point that we, we shouldn't forget is that this is a massive step up for pretty much all of these players, the exception of Fonzie, Atiba, uh, and David, right? This is like new territory. You're playing Belgium and Croatia, for Christ's sakes, all right? This is different level, and it's going to be a real awakening, I think, for some of these players. Now, with that, I, I don't think there's any pressure on these guys. Now, Herman will put pressure on them, because that's what he does. He'll say, yeah, you know, we've got to prove all the doubt is wrong. Put that chip on your shoulder. But they got to a World Cup. They're in a really tough group. 
there is no pressure on this team. And those teams are dangerous teams. They can get a result when perhaps you don't expect it. So I think it's fascinating, you know, more and more fascinating the closer we get to it, how these guys are going to be like, holy crap, this is what world-class football is all about. But no one expects anything from us, really. So let's just go out and enjoy ourselves. And that, that's a dangerous beast. Okay, final question. And I want to throw this to all of you. Let's start with Mikey. Now we know the squad, the 26 men that are going, uh, you know, cross fingers that no one gets injured uh, in the process. But how confident are you in this squad to pick up at least one result? They're going to win the group. Come on. <laughs> no. all, all jokes aside, uh, you know, listen, there's all three opponents are so difficult. Like, obviously, Belgium, obviously, Croatia. We know what's what's happening there. And then Morocco is a team people are just sort of glossing over, but they're a damn good football side as well. Canada are going to be the underdogs in this group for a good reason. They are the underdogs. Let's not sugarcoat that. That being said, every single time we decide to underestimate this team and sort of temper expectations, they find a way specifically in these last 18 months to sort of just defy those expectations. So I'm going to say... Three games, 90 minutes each game, I say there's a chance for sure. Sarah, where's your confidence level at? Listen, I'm so stoked that Canada's here. We know they're going to be there in four years as well, especially for you know, like some of the young guys. We're going to see them again. Um, Like James said, there's no pressure on this, on this team right now. They are the underdogs. They are going up against massive sides. I think we got to be happy that we're here. Do the best we can. And have fun. But I do not see Canada leaving fourth place in this group, unfortunately. James? Yeah, chaos ball. Let's embrace chaos ball. Yes. <laughs> really, like, like this team likes chaos, right? And, and if you can get one or two of these games into that situation where it's late in the game and it's still tight, who knows what can happen, right? And, and this team it loves a good scrap. Um, that said, I think if they get out of this World Cup with a point... I think that will honestly, I'd be more than well, more than happy with that. I wouldn't be happy. I want to see them progress, obviously, mm -hmm. but I would be satisfied with that. If they leave without a point, I mean, it won't surprise me. It'll be a little bit disappointing, though. So get a point, score a goal, boom. Let's let's now focus on the Gold Cup, right? And <laughs> entering that as one of the damn favorites. Baby steps, people. Baby steps. Yeah, yeah. The future is definitely bright for Canada. And yes, you know, there might not be you know, that type of outside pressure on Canada to make some noise at this World Cup. But I think the internal pressure is going to help this team push on what John Herdman puts on these players. I'm hoping for at least a point and a couple of goals. You know, I was also hoping for Scotty Arfield. We didn't get that. Almost. <laughs> almost. Almost. He was there almost was, there. there were conversations uh, but that's it. The announcement is done. The squad has been named. Seven days to the World Cup. Ten days until Canada played Belgium for the first time since 1986. And that's it for us. Yeah, Room 442. Make sure you follow us at the Room 442, I think, official. Did I say that right, guys? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah, something like that. Room 442 on Twitter. Make sure you follow us. <laughs> we'll be back in studio on Monday. Thanks for this, guys.